This tape has been taken from 8mm movies shot in 1960 by Owen Carlson. The date is 1 August 1960. On the far side of the Piscataqua River is Portsmouth, New Hampshire, and we are at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, physically located in Kittery, Maine. There are the building ways out of which Sea Dragon was launched, and other submarines, including Thresher. The operator is standing on the bridge. There's Chase Anderson, at the time an eye seaman, coming down the pier to come aboard. USS Al Albacore, tied up at the pier around the corner. Albacore was a re uh, research submarine, particularly in submarine handling and speed submerged. This is the day the Sea Dragon will set out for her new home port in Pearl Harbor by way of the North Pole. This is a cable layer that was home ported at Portsmouth at the time. Going to pull in a stern of us and tie up. Now we're getting closer to the time when we're going to get underway. A lot of the crews gathered topside and some certain silliness is going on. The uh, gentleman with the microphone is from Boston Television Station. And here are, I'll try to point out some of the people as we come to them. WBZ News. My audio narrative, there George Harlow on the left, Bob Hammond, Frank Kanicki on the right of those three, Sonerman all, first class, second class, second class. Marty Littleton, the chief petty officer, is back to us. There's the doctor, Dr. Lou Seaton. He later rose to the to be the head of the Navy's Medical Corps. I've shifted to standing on the forward deck of the Sea Dragon, looking forward. Here's the XO, well, Lieutenant Commander Strong. Moose Leahy, Lieutenant JG at the time, and now we are at sea. Someplace up in Baffin Bay, and you can just begin to see the ice along the uh, horizon. Thin ice. That I think was a corpsman by the name of Peter Gunn.
movies were not taken to videotape until about 1992 or 3. There's an iceberg out there. And I'm adding this audio annotation in 2001. The movies were more than 30 year, uh, years old at the time they were taken to tape, and uh, their quality is not the best. I caught them just before they completely deteriorated. The crew, of course, thought it was extremely interesting that we were going to the North Pole and anytime we surfaced and people could get on deck everybody got out looked around to see what they could see which sometimes wasn't a great deal here's a bird and another iceberg we're in Baffin Bay and the icebergs are calving off the uh, west coast of Greenland to then drift south into the Atlantic. There's the one that we called the Sea Dragon's uh, the face. Very large iceberg. And some of the troops up forward. Bridge watch up there. Mar, some of the people I see. Somebody started to come up out of the forward torpedo room, but then it took forever to get organized and actually come out. And who was it? This is what was called brash and block. Ice. Lots of large blocks and, uh, but nothing the size of even a small iceberg. Seaton on the right. This is Walt Whitman, a Navy uh, scientist who was along on the trip taking anemometer readings. iceberg but seriously overexposed. The breeze is fierce this day and in trying to stay out of it I got too low and obscured that which I was trying to shoot. I believe these are the islands as you enter the Perry Channel through the Canadian archipelago. Where we made Sea Dragon's Northwest Passage. I beg your pardon, McClure 
Emperor straight. And we were stopped here to talk with people from the Royal Canadian Air Force Station at Resolute Bay. Some of them came out in a motor launch and uh, talked for a while. I don't recall that any of us went ashore. They pointed out one of the attractions around here was that there was a woman behind every tree. Of course, there are no trees. This is a supply ship that was uh, delivering supplies to the Air Force Station. we have transited through all of McClure Strait and gotten out into the Arctic Basin and surfaced in a polynia, a hole in the ice which has then refrozen, a, a, a place where the ice has drifted apart from each other, been blown by the wind or drifted by the currents. Then you can see it's frozen over, but only to an inch or two. Here's Chief Phillips. PB, baby. The diesel engine exhaust showing that the diesel's running. And you can see some of the ice thickness to be oh, three or four inches, maybe six inches. Uh, where we have surfaced through it. Now I'm all the way aft on the walking deck looking forward at the sail and the ice beyond the boat, somebody getting out of the sail. Decided not to. Bridge watch. Here we rigged a rubber life raft with uh, lines to the ice so that we can pull people back and forth and uh, do things on the ice. There's the Herald's Club sign. And here is the first softball game at the North Pole. The date is uh, 25 August 1960. The time is in the very early hours of the morning, but of course that doesn't much matter up here at the North Pole since the sun is up all the time anyway. Uh, caught him who caught who. <laughs> Changing sides. 
believe this was crew versus chiefs and officers, and uh, yeah, there's Commodore Robertson of the Canadian Navy. He had been through here on icebreakers back when, and joined us to give advice. The softball game continues. An easy pop fly. And we've moved on to yet another Polinia. You can see how clear the water is. Our scuba divers at one point left the boat and did short tours underneath the ice to see how they could do in that environment. Here's truly with a heaving line. Sea Dragon. Sea Dragon, 90 North. Doc and uh, several of his people uh, set up quarters out on the ice at one point, simulating a survival training should the submarine sink or uh, have to leave them on the ice for some reason. Uh, they survived quite well for the limited duration of the test. At one of these surfacings in Apollonia, a seal came along, but uh, we didn't get pictures of the seal. He was as curious as we were. Folks out taking a hike. down toward the coast of Alaska, the north coast, between Point Barrow and the Straits. Uh, all of the ice is uh, to the north of us toward the pole, and we are going to do a surface transit of the Bering Strait. And uh, proceed south. Banging right along on the surface. ahead, still surface transiting. If memory serves me correctly, that's Big Diomede Island. And Little Diomede's beyond it someplace. The two closest points of land, uh, Russia and America. Alaska.
And here we have arrived at Nome, Alaska. The date is 5 September 1960. A Coast Guard icebreaker had been doing work in the area and we were able to tie up to the icebreaker and uh, use her Liberty launches to go to shore and uh, celebrate. We celebrated quite thoroughly. This is going to be the end of the uh, Sea Dragon part of the tape very soon since dark is about to fall. We're somewhat south of the Arctic Circle, a few miles, 90 miles or so south, and there's a speedboat. We're about 90 miles or so south of the Arctic Circle at this point, so there is some dusk. And since we're past the uh, longest day of the year, by a couple of months, it actually does get dark. warehouses near the uh, small boat harbor. Everything is brought in by a larger ship and then put into uh, small barges to be taken into the small boat harbor and then transferred ashore. Uh, the depth of the small boat harbor is far too shallow for any ship to get into it. Here is a surfacing close to Hawaii that uh, we did as we approached Hawaii. We uh, had time to spare before we were due to arrive at Pearl Harbor. So the captain uh, surfaced and allowed swim call. And a flock of folks got wet. Kahuna Harlow up there on a barrel. And here. And now we have pulled into Pearl Harbor and we're berthed at our normal assigned berth at that time as CR-1 Bravo. And there are some of the Lion Leeward Mountain chain there and the officers club along this side. These theaters up that street and so is the barracks. There is the escape training tank. The cranes over at the shipyard, another submarine astern. Destroyer area over there. And the uh, torpedo retriever shelter block arena and uh, the ball field beyond it, oil tanks, all the things of the major navy base. Our topside watch. We didn't stay in Pearl Harbor all that long. It didn't take long for them to get us into the normal mode of operation for an SSN. It was underway an awful lot. Since at that point, there were very few nuclear submarines in Pearl. That looks like the end of the Sea Dragon stuff there.
Nope, one more shot from the barracks. There's a barracks pool, the console pack building. There's a shot of the barracks back again. Oops. There's a shot of the Sea Dragon at, Co uh, at the Kona coast of Hawaii. Where we were anchored in company with Sargo and Swordfish. After doing some joint exercises. I don't know which that one is. There's the other one. All three ships of the same class. Swordfish 579, Sargo 583, and Sea Dragon 584. And we stayed here for all, all of the afternoon and the evening, and uh, late in the evening the wind sprung up from the southwest, and uh, everybody had to get underway, including, ah, there's Wedge Vahey on the right. There's Master Chief John Knox Evans. Just recently passed away, according to information I received. Chief Hunter. Lieutenant Thompson. Looks like Pappy Gill. And this was the mode of transportation to get us ashore.